Welcome back guys to this video. Today we're doing Void from Hack the Box. Void is part of the CA or Cyber Apocalypse City of Challenges, collection of challenges. Now again today the challenge will be about buffer overflow. So if you have watched the previous videos, namely questionnaire and getting started, you will have established uh, some level in analyzing and interacting with binaries using uh, GDB uh, debugger. You may have learned how to find the offset of the stack pointer when there is a segmentation fault. Also, you may have learned how to uh, run the binder in GTP and cause a segmentation fault if there is a vulnerability. Now, today we will take this further and convert all of the learnings we have, uh, convert all of the things we have learned in questionnaire and getting started and establish a real shell on the target system. So that's why Void is here. That's the challenge of today, and we're on the challenge. There is an IP and there is port, and of course, don't forget to download the files of the challenge. So to demonstrate the challenge, I'm gonna use my machine and hack the box machine because the apparently the binary didn't run on my machine. So what do we do first? First thing I did is to extract the files from the challenge. So ls, as you can see, I have the binary itself. And there is this flag, and the directory contains the binary folders. If I try to run the binary, or just first execute file on void, I see it is at the 64 bit executable. And my machine is 32 bits, that's why the binary may not work on my machine. Uh, since I don't have the source code, what I did is to run the binary in Ghidra. And take a look at the Verize functions. So if you go to main here, we can see that the main function is rather simple and short. So we define the main function. Inside the main function, we see there is only one call to another function. The function name is vulnerable or vern. So when we see a call to a function, we need to take a look at the contents of that function. So we search for that function here in the list of functions and we see vulnerable is here. We click on vulnerable to see the current contents. So we see a definition of, it's undefined, but it's probably it is a character set, variable, local 48, the name of the variable, and we have 64, 64 bytes, the size of this variable. All right, then we see read function. Read function is a function used to take the input from the user. And here it defines that it reads, sorry, it reads 200 bytes and stores the 200 bytes into local 48. Now there is something wrong here because the variable itself is 64 bytes. On the other hand, we are trying to store or read 200 bytes into a already defined 64 bytes variable, which is how regularly buffer overflow vulnerabilities happen. So we're trying to read um, content that's that exceeds the size of the variable which is local 48 that's we that's why we will get a segmentation fault if we generate more than 200 more than 64 bytes so now we learned that there is a bug in the code and that bug would lead to a segmentation fault it's now time to uh, try some buffer overflow exploitation on this binary so what do we do? We run GDB debugger. Let's go. And this time I'm using Hack the Box online or in browser built-in machine. So here, what I did, let me scroll up. Let's see. Don't mind these, we don't want them. Okay, let me do them from scratch because it looks like it's a mess here. So quit. Clear. So now we run gpp-q void. Okay, so the first thing now is to generate a pattern. So pattern um, create, let's say 1024 bytes. So this is the pattern we have. Now we're gonna feed this pattern into the uh, binary. So what's going to happen, let's get back to the code here. Instead of 200, we're going to read 1024. So 
definitely it's going to create segmentation for that. It's going to overflow the uh, size of it's going to overflow the contents of this uh, variable and the other bytes will be written on the stack. That's our objective. We want to overflow the stack, not only the variable. So back here. Okay. Now what we're going to do, we're going to feed this into the binary itself. So we're going to take this. First, we run the binary. And now the binary is waiting for the input. We're going to say, there you go. This is the input you're going to have. See what's going to happen. And now we received, as you can see, guys, segmentation fault. Okay. And it's telling you where it happened in the vulnerable function, which is here. I don't have to show you one more time, right, guys? You are following with me. This is the function. Okay. Back to the terminal. So what we have to do now, since the objective in buffer overflow is to overflow the stack all the way till the return address, we want to overflow the stack with enough bytes to reach the return address. So we want to know exactly after how many bytes the overflow happened, okay? which is what we call the offset. We want to find the offset. It's the uh, spot or the mark after which we want to write our shellcode. So we need to find how many bytes, okay, after how many bytes we need to write our shellcode to reach the return address and hence execute the shellcode. So as you can see, to find this, we need to take a look at two registers, the base pointer and the stack pointer. So the base pointer here shows you where it started, where the overflow started. And here the stack pointer the stack pointer points to this contents, which is apparently part of the uh, payload we sent. And here, as you can see, we have the address. So what we can do here, we want to take this address and find the offset. The stack pointer always. Okay, so pattern search. Okay, let's take a look here. Registers contained pattern buffer. So base pointer found at offset 64. Okay, registers point to pattern buffer, the source index, and then we have the stack pointer offset 72. So which means after 72 bytes, the overflow happened. And after 72 bytes, we need to, we need to write the payload. So basically, we fill, what we need to do now, we need to fill uh, the stack with 72 bytes of random payload, whatever you want. Okay. After 72 bytes, we need to write the shellcode. Now, what kind of shellcode we need to write here? In order to be able to find the answer for this question, we need to understand the protections set on the binary because the protections enabled on the binary will actually create your map or the map you need to follow in order to perform the exploitation. So let's use now check sec annex is enabled which means code execution it's kind of you know a trouble here but we have this which is partial when we have our l row to be partial it means we can use pawn tools to link a function to this binary that's not already linked we call this return to DL resolve, which is actually an exploit method that let you link a function to the binary that's not already linked. What do you mean by that? Let's go back to the code and demonstrate this. So here, as you can see, we have only one function linked to the binary, right? Now, an unlinked function is a function that's not called, doesn't get called in the, 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 in the binary itself. We want the binary to call a system function, mainly a shell, right? So to be able to do that, we need to take advantage of the fact that this is partial here. So what to do now, we need to write actually an exploit that's predetermined because we can use pawn tools and uh, let me d demonstrate this here better than speaking. So let's take a look at the code. 
open new tab nano okay so as you can see we use pawn tools and we define the context pointer here which is void you can change this whatever you want depending on your uh, environment and then here as you can see guys this is where all it goes now as you can see we choose the function that we want to link using this now exactly this one or return to the resolve payload is imported from pawn tools so without pawn tools this exploit may not work and then as you can see here guys we provide the host and the port to connect to and then as you can see here guys we send 72 bytes of ace because the offset is at 72 which means we can fill the stack with 72 bytes and then we feed the payload now the payload here as you can see is the rope chain which contains the function that we want to link and lastly we actually convert this in an interactive shell so if we execute this so see here so as you can see we execute the script providing the IP and port we're giving it a challenge as you can see it gives you at least the current protections on the binary and lastly guys we see we have a shell here this is the flag and that's how it worked now I have all of these guys buffer overflow exploitation techniques in one document uh, it can be found in the channel membership if you are subscribed so that was it today guys i hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you later